Okay, it seems I'm live. I'm not sure when I went live. I was doing some setting and then it is now showing I'm live. So welcome back everyone. I'm not sure how many people are watching this. Hit that like button if you're watching this. And let me know in the chat window if my audio is properly audible and the video as well. Okay, awesome. Uh, so welcome back aliens to the next session. And today if you have seen the topic is same which we have done last time. Uh, the topic was uh, interface and we'll start with interface and then we'll move towards uh, packages. And uh, Black says no sound. That's right, you heard me. <laughs> cool. Uh, okay, so uh, I know we have missed the, uh, the two sessions on Monday and Tuesday. We are doing it now. I was busy with something else. And uh, yeah, so let's continue with the code what we were doing in the last session. Before that, in fact, we'll start in two minutes. Uh, I just want to know if everything is good, if you are facing any issue. So give me a second, well, then we'll start. Awesome. So let's continue with the topic, which is interface. And what I will do today is let me just clear out all the things. We'll start from the basic. Okay, let's not even talk about alien here. And maybe since I've dated the code, even alien will be affected now. So we have to say, hey, alien, don't just focus on any of this code here. Ignore everything. Not anything with you. Okay, so as you can see, this is a clean state. I'm just uh, trying to start from the basic. Now in the last session, uh, the thing is, uh, we started with a question, which is why we should use interface. And maybe that's why you get con got confused. So today we'll talk about what is interface and then you can rewatch the previous session. Okay, uh, Glam Neil says, I just enrolled on the Java full stack course. Uh, would you also provide training in that? Yes, I'll be, the, I'll be your lead trainer there in which we don't just have uh, code java we have everything we have servlets uh, spring spring uh, spring framework spring boot and microservices okay so there are some questions on the courses yeah we'll i will talk about the courses at the end of this live session okay so let me focus on the interface concept and then we'll move forward now first of all since i i have a file which is project.java let me create a class here, which is a project that's our class name so i will say class project and as usual if you want to execute this code we need a main function as well so we got our main method there right now what i want here is i want to use the concept of interface so what i will do is i will just go on top here now how do we define interface now see if you talk about an interface let's create an interface here now interface is similar to classes or it is similar to abstract class uh, we have talked about abstract class in the last session so abstract class is a class where you have, uh, you can have methods which are declared and you can have classes which are implemented or you have methods you can, which is implemented. In terms of interface, every method, example, if I say interface uh, A, I don't know, it's not a good way of naming an interface or a class, but let's say A, or maybe just to have it different, let's say ABC. So we have interface which is ABC. Now in this interface, which is similar to class, the only thing is in interface, all the methods will be abstract let me repeat in the interface all the method will be abstract okay is my screen blurry to everyone or yeah, the session is getting recorded is my screen clear or you can it's it's still blurry Okay, oh, it's good, right? Okay, cool. Uh, so we have an interface which is ABC. Now in this case, what I will do is, uh, let me create, oh, sorry, just my camera just got, okay. So in the interface, we can declare methods. Example, if I want to create a method which is, uh, let's say void show. Now, if this is my method, I can actually declare this method. Okay, so by default, every method in the interface is abstract. That means you don't define the methods there, you only declare the methods, right? And that's what we are doing here. We are saying void show, that's it. Okay, 
Now, question arise, can I instantiate? So when I say instantiate, I'm simply saying, can I create object of the interface? And the answer is no, you can't in instantiate the interface. Okay, you can't do that. Uh, okay, so let's say if I don't create the, uh, if I don't instantiate this, how can I use it? See, the thing is interface are never meant to be instantiated. It's just create a, a way of defining how do we do certain stuff. For example, let's say if we talk about a very general example, we talk about cars, right? Now, different cars have a different behavior of, of doing this stuff, right? Example, let's say if you, uh, doesn't matter if you buy a cheap car or if you buy a very costly car, every car will have certain features. So if you can drive a normal car, you can drive another cars as well, which are very, which are very costly. Uh, especially in India, we can talk about two cars which are very famous. We have Wagonard. Now Wagonard is very, uh, it's not that expensive. It's a uh, entry level car we have. And let's say we have another car, which is uh, very famous again, which is Fortuner. Now, if you compare these two cars, the, if, if you know how to drive one car, it is easier to learn how to car, how to drive other, other, another car. Now, why they are similar? It's not because they have the same engine. It's not because they have the same uh, power. It's not because they have the same steering wheel. Everything is different. But then the basic layout is same. Every car will have a steering wheel. Every car will have an engine. Every car will have a clutch, gear, and uh, a brake, escalator, right? They will have the same stuff. So when you would design a car on a paper, you will say, okay, a car should have a steering wheel. A car should have, a car should be able to move. A car should be able to do a reverse. A car should be able to jump. No, car, we don't do that, right? But then you define, you do, you do mention everything of what a car should do. In the same way, if I change this interface, I can say this is a car. And here I can say a car can uh, move. Of course, that a car can move. A car can have, uh, you can steer the car, right? Or you can, you can, do, you can do that. Let's say if you only focus on one thing, a car can move. So here, what we are saying is we are just saying a car can move or a car, we can drive a car, right? That's a proper name. So we can drive a car, but then we are not actually implementing it. If you want to really work with a car, you have to create a class. You can't actually use the car by default. You have to create a class to make it work. And this time you have to be very specific. Let's say this time we are saying Wagonart. Okay. Uh, let me know in the chat window if you know what Wagonart car is and if you're a big fan of Wagonart. Uh, I have a car which is not Wagonard, which is a low version of Wagonard. Any guess uh, which car I drive in the city? Uh, it's not Wagonard, it's a lower version of Wagonard. So let's say if we talk about this car, which is Wagonard, this car, this, so this Wagonard class actually implements a car, right? Uh, so you can't instantiate the car, but you can instantiate Wagonard because that's a class. Now, when you say you have a class, which is Wagonard, it should also have a method which is which is drive. So we have to say public void a drive. Even Wagonard, you can drive Wagonard, right? Okay, uh, so people are guessing here. People are guessing BMW. No, that's not the lower version of Wagonard, right? Uh, uh, not not Celerio. You're almost there. So there's a car which came after Celerio. And uh, it has the same engine as Alto. No, Nano is not. So the, the, the brand is Maruto Suzuki. Uh, okay, let's... So let's see if we can guess that. So we have public void drive and uh, we can we can actually drive a car here. So we can say it's driving. Okay. Uh, so basically we have this, we have this class which is Wagonar and then we have a method which is drive. So basically what we are doing is by creating an interface, we are saying a car can do this. But how exactly it will do, that will be done with the help of a class. The actual implementation will be done inside a class uh, with the method which is drive, okay? And now with this class, you can actually come back here and you can create uh, the object of Wagonard. You can't get object of interface, which is car. You can get object of Wagonard and you can say new Wagonard. Okay, let me give you one more hint. It has the same name compared to a coffee. Okay, someone has given the right answer, which is Ravi Teja. That's right, I have an espresso. Not E, with, it's just espresso. Okay. Uh, so basically, when you talk about interface, you actually use implements. When we use class and class, that's, uh, that's your uh, extends. Example, if let me write it here. So when you have car, class, with class, 
you say okay class extends class and then a class implements interface now why we got this name which is implements is because of why we got this keyword which is extends because it directly uses all the feature so if you have a class let's say a which has most of the methods the class b can simply use all the features but then when you talk about a class which is using an interface it basically need to define all the methods because the methods are declared right you can't do anything with that so if you want to use those methods you need to define it and that's why we say it is implementing it okay uh, okay so now we are creating object of webinar and we can say obj dot drive and if i run this code you can you should be able to see the output and you can see we can say it is driving now the beauty is you might be thinking hey anyway we are creating object of webinar right why do we even need a card at the first place the answer is very simple if you be very specific like a webinar you are specifying what card you want but in general you can say hey instead of referring this obj as a webinar we can refer this as a card so now we are saying hey there's a card obj but the actual implementation is webinar so what type of object we are using here we are using a type of card so in future even this object changes that should not be an issue right if you know how to drive a car example when you get a license you don't get a license by saying you've got a license for webinar you got you got a license for bmw you got a you got a license to drive a four wheeler now this four wheeler can be a car a jeep uh, it can be anything is it making sense so when you design your project when you design uh, the classes interfaces we are going to use that's how you design it you say okay they, we have a class here but then this class can be replaced with something else but then the basic interface will be will, will be same so now we are using webinar in future maybe I'm, I'm, i will be using bmw both are cars okay so things to remember when you talk about interface interface can only have declaration it can only have abstract methods now this is true for java 7 java 8 we got something else but then this is true for java 7 okay okay the disco site is inactive yeah that's right so the the website is under uh, maintenance we are just updating some features on the website and that's why it is uh, under maintenance now. And I'm not getting enough time to actually do it fast. I'm busy with other project, so I'm not able to focus on the website now. But yeah, it is under development. Okay, question from Saroj. When to go for interfaces and when to go for abstract class? See, when you have multiple implementation, example, Wagonar is not just a car. Wagonar is also, uh, we can say it's a house. You can stay in webinar, right? Maybe I'm not. I'm not sure. So let's say if you, uh, you know, normally people call it as a box <laughs> in India. Uh, it's a dabba gadi. But anyway, so if you say uh, void a box can have, uh, you can stay there, right? Doesn't matter. Just go with the example. I'm I'm not sure about what the box does. But let's say if you say a method stay. Now webinar actually is a car and also a box, so we can actually implement both the uh, interfaces. We can't do that with abstract class. Uh, no, actually, Sandeep, it's not to solve the diamond problem. Okay, a lot of people say that we got interface just because we wanted to go for uh, multiple uh, multiple inheritance, but that's not the case. We got interface to add extra behavior to a class. So webinar is used as a card, but it can also has a box feature. Okay. See, ultimately you are defining all the methods, right? You need to define the methods. So idea was never to get uh, the multiple inheritance. It was just to add extra behavior to, an, uh, to a class. Okay, now that's a question from Suresh and good question. What if a webinar has extra features? Let's say in webinar you have one more which is 
uh, Vagina can fly and that's right when you go beyond a certain limit you, your car actually flies off the highway you know just the car it's because it's so lightweight you can actually see it's flying a Vagina can fly actually not every car can fly Vagina can fly so let's say if you say uh, flying here now can you access this extra method because you can see this method is not there in the in the card or in the box this is extra method which is available only for the webinar so can i call webinar from this card no we can't do that awesome uh, so basically the reason we, why we create interface is to have is to define the behavior if you get a class, what behavior the class should have. So you can declare all the behaviors here and then you can implement those behavior so that in future you can actually change it. Awesome. Now, okay, where's the class 11th? Before this, there's 11th class. You can find it in the playlist or not the playlist, but in the channel. You seem to have a very big fan of Wagonar. Yeah, I have a card which is Espresso. Not a lot of people know it. So I thought Wagonar is very famous. I thought, well, let's take Wagonar. Anyway, uh, so this is interface. Again, we'll talk more about interface in the upcoming session. Tomorrow, we are going to talk about Lambda expressions, which where interface, where interface will be a big thing. So since in the last session, there was a confusion. So I took, took, took it once again. Okay, can we extend interface to interface and that is correct. So what you can do is, let's say we have one more interface here, which is a supercar, uh, supercar. Now this interface can actually fly. This, this uh, interface can have a fly method. Now what you can do is, a car, a supercar should be able to drive and we should be able to fly in it. Again, same way, Vagana, Vagana can fly and Vagana can drive. Uh, so what you can do is, if you want to use this particular method inside this interface, you can actually use extends. So interface can extend an interface. So what you can do here is, let me just add extra stuff. Interface and interface, they extends. Interface extends interface. And now what I can do is, instead of having this fly method, in fact, if you, if you say this is a supercar, now you can actually use both the methods obj dot fly the only thing which is missing now is if you go back here wagonar implements a car instead of saying car we can actually say supercar so when i say supercar it is actually implementing both the interfaces not just one it is implementing car and supercar both both is because the supercar extends car Awesome. And again, if you like my videos, hit that like button, everyone. Okay, just a second. Okay, so this is our interface again. We'll, tomorrow again, we'll talk about interface. But before that, let me talk about something else. Uh, as you see that thumbnail, we have two topics today. And the second topic is actually very important. So we'll focus on that one now. And then we'll come back to uh, the interface part tomorrow when you talk about Lambda expression. So point remember in the interface, we only declare methods. Uh, can we define methods? Again, that was introduced in Java 8, but we'll talk about Java 8 features in the next session. So tomorrow we're gonna talk about Lambda expression where Java 8 features will be used. Okay, now coming back here, let me talk about the next concept, which is packages. See what happens, you know, when you make a project, you actually don't have one or two classes. You actually have a lot of classes, okay? A uh, lot of classes, a lot of interfaces. So what we do is we always merge. We, we keep those packages and things, or uh, you, you keep these classes and uh, interfaces in a particular folders. So you can say a folder or a subfolder. Now, I don't know if you do this, let me know in the chat if you have done this before. Uh, so I'm talking about the old time, not now, because now we can listen to music on any music platform, like YouTube Music or the Spotify or Amazon Music. We have so many platforms, right? But there was a time when you used to keep all the in fact, let me let me tell you an example where, where we used to keep all the video, all the photos, videos, uh, music in a particular drive. Uh, so let me know if in the chat if we have done this. 
uh, you should be old enough to remember that so one of my friend uh, he was using a laptop and then there was some issue with the laptop so he, he he came to me by saying hey this my machine is not working properly it's very slow so when i looked at the uh, machine the, actually the c drive was was very full there was only uh, 200 300 mb was left in the c drive and then uh, you should not be exploiting other drives of other people but then he was my friend we were very close so what i did i looked at his computer it was he was having multiple drives c drive d drive e drive and we have this tendency of putting all the uh, oh. softwares in e drive right so we can name the drives right we can say d drive is actually uh... oh i am not audible Okay, just a second, everyone. Yeah, so basically you can have multiple drives, right? So D drive can have, uh, so E drive will have all the software. Yeah, it can be pirated. And then D drive is actually where you put all the content. Yeah, this is where you have, so let's say your D drive name is multimedia. Now, when you open multimedia drive in D drive, you will find multiple folders. You will find photos, you will find videos, you will find music. And then I was a, I'm a big fan of music, so I went into music folder. And then inside music, there, were, there was a music like English, Hindi, and then regional language. Uh, it was Marathi, and then three languages music. I went into Hindi, right? Now, in the Hindi music, there were multiple sections. Old songs, new songs. And then I went into new songs. Then the new songs, there were multiple folders. Romantic songs, DJ songs, and sad songs. I thought, okay, that's a good classification. Now, inside the sad songs, you will find the music, right? Uh, no. Inside the sad songs, there were ultimate sad songs, normal sad songs, and mild sad songs. Okay? So, I wanted to explore what is ultimate sad songs. And when I got into ultimate sad songs, there were multiple songs, uh, songs and then there was one, one song, which is one of my favorite, which is Sach Karai Diwana. So, you can imagine the level of hierarchy. So if you want to find a particular music, that's a hierarchy you follow. Now, why it is important, first of all, uh, whenever you have multiple things at the, at the same place, it's it's good to put that in a particular folder so that, you know, depend upon your mood. The example, if you are very happy, let's say you got a new phone, you got a new laptop, or you got a promotion, or uh, you got around 140 likes on YouTube Live, which is not good. I'm looking for 200 likes there. But let's say if you get a lot of likes, I'm very happy now I want to listen to your music. So I want to listen to only, uh, you know, be high beat songs now. But let's say if my my phone is not working or I got only 150 likes on YouTube, I'm, I'm very sad now. And now I want to listen to a sad song. So I will go to a particular folder and then I will listen to a, listen to it. In the same way, when you build a project, you actually divide your classes in such a way that all the related classes will be in one folder. Maybe you can create subfolders as well. Right? So you can have a big folder like sad songs and then you can have ultimate sad songs. So it's always good to have those hierarchy there. Right. Uh, Ajit says, who broke your heart? You people, you're not giving likes there. Hit the like button, that will make me happy. And then I will listen to a good music. Okay, uh, Sharish is asking a question. What do you think, Sharish? Is it... True or is it, I'm just creating a story here. You tell me. <laughs> okay. Uh, awesome. So basically the idea is to keep your classes in a particular folder. So example, you know, if you talk about a good architecture of a project, what we normally do is we have different, example, if you talk about normal project uh, in um, a web project, what you do is you create a lot of controllers. Now controllers are basically where you send requests. Again, we'll, we'll discuss this if you have learned about servlet and uh, spring you know about controllers others you can join the batch and you can learn about these things uh, you will find the link in the pinned chat on top if if those links are working okay uh, okay so basically we got a controller uh, we can also have classes which interact with the databases so i can say this is data classes which interact with the uh, databases. Then we can have some more classes which will act as a service classes. 
Example, if you want to perform any operations, we create service, service classes. So basically, in your project, you'll be having a lot of controllers. Again, all these are classes and interfaces. You'll be having a lot of controllers. You'll be having a lot of data classes. You will have a lot of services. So instead of keeping all these classes interface in one folder, the way we have done here, if you can see SRC, we have all the classes. Let me show you that. We have all the classes in one folder. Now, this is not a good way of creating uh, creating a lot of classes. So in this case, what, what we do is we have to create subfolders. Now, how do we do that in Java? If you want to create folders and subfolders, we, we, call, we create packages. Okay. Um, so basically, we create, we create packages here. Now, a package can have a sub package as well. So again, we don't say sub packages, but we can have a package inside a package and a package inside a package. So it's good to create packages. Example, if you want to put this particular folder, this particular project in a package, it's very simple. Just say package and mention the package name. I will name this package as Naveen. Again, not a good way of naming a package. We'll see how do we create packages? How do we name a package? Uh, so as you can see, this is not working. It says package name Naveen does not correspond to a, a, a file path. It's because I don't have a package here. So what I will do is in my SRC, I will right click, I will say new. You can see there should be an option of creating a package here. So you can say package name is Naveen and done. We got a Naveen package here. But unfortunately, my project is not inside this Naveen package. So we can simply move it to Naveen package refactor and done. You can see now, if you want to access project, you need to go to Navin package. I will create one more, one more package here. Uh, let me create a, uh, not class. I will create one more package. I will say new package and we'll name this package as, uh, entities. So entities are like alien calculators and uh, humans. Computers, all those are entities, right? Because we are objects, it doesn't matter. So basically we can move all these things. So example, I can move Calc, Calc1, Naveen, uh, Alien. Everything goes to entity and done. And you can see if I go to Alien, now thanks to IntelliJ IDEA, it is actually giving me these packages here. Okay. Now coming back to project here, so that's how you create a package, right? So make sure that you put all the classes in one particular folder, not one folder, but different packages, different folders. And how do we decide this? So when you design your project, you have to mention, okay, this number of classes belong to this service. Uh, this number of this number of classes have these features. So put those classes in that particular folder. Okay. Okay, Sai says, I gave three likes from three of the accounts. Thank you so much, Sai. Now I'm very happy. Now I'll listen to good music. Some rock music. Okay, good. So basically, we have to get a package, right? And uh, now the thing is, what should be your package name? How do we decide a package name? Should you, pay, should you name your packages as Naveen or as Entities? Uh, not exactly. See, the thing is, you have to make sure that whatever package name which you are using is unique. Okay, now when I say unique, unique to what? Unique to your project or unique to the entire world? What if I say your package name should be unique in the entire world? Okay, let me show you what I'm talking about. Uh, see, when you build a good project, you actually have... You don't build everything from scratch, right? What you do is you build a project uh, and you use some libraries. So example, I'm sharing my screen here where, where, I'm, where I went to MVN repository, just ignore this uh, website. What you have to focus is, what if you want to use some library here? Okay. I want to use a library which is, uh, let's say MySQL library. Okay. Now when I say I want to use a MySQL library, if you want to connect MySQL with Java, this is the library you have to use, right? Now in future, when you create project, you have to, you can also share your library or your code with the entire world so that, so that they can use. And if I use a particular version, 
so I have to make sure that my package, my particular library is unique in the entire world. So when I search for MySQL, why I got this particular library, why not something else? It's because this is unique. Now, how will you make a name or a package name which is unique in the entire world? Now for the, so what do you think? How do you, how do you name something which is unique in the entire world? So Pawa says Elon Musk's son, son's name is X. Okay, that's right. That's how you make it unique. But do you think if you have such name, is it easy to remember? Yes, we'll talk about folder inside of folder, but tell me how do we name something which is very unique in the world? So even if you say you will name your package something like this, what if you name your package like uh, this, this, this value? What's the guarantee that this is unique in the entire world? Okay. Now, before we do that, we have a super chat from Coder. And the super chat is, thank you so much for, for Coder Toaster for the super chat. The question is, an interview asked me this, how would, how would I scale a monolithic application? Like for microservices, I can deploy multiple copies. Can't do that in monolith. Why can't? We can just create replicas of monolith, monolith application. So we can, so we have two options. Either you can scale in a horizontal way. So you can have multiple copies of the same application or you can scale in a vertical way where you can, where you can enhance your server speed. Maybe a good CPU, a good RAM, a good, uh, instead of using normal hard drive, we can use SSDs. So either you can scale it vertically by improving the hard drive or hardware, or you can scale horizontally by having multiple instances. Okay, coming back to this, how do you name something unique? And few people have actually answered this. So what you will do is, whenever you build a project, you can use something like a domain name. Domain names are always, always unique, right? Example, telesco.com is unique. So if, I, if I'm building a project for Telesco, I can have com.telesco as my package name. So instead of saying it Naveen, I should have said com.telesco. Now this is unique. In fact, even Telesco works because that is unique in the entire world. Okay, we only have one Telesco. But anyway, uh, having a reverse of your domain name is unique. Why it is unique is because you own that domain. Right, so when you own a domain, it's your domain, and domain can copy it. So just reverse it. So you can say com dot telesco. This is a unique package now. Okay. Now it looks like we have one name, but what is happening is the main package is com, and inside this com package we have telesco. Okay, so we, we're getting a sub packages here. Okay, proper naming related to project or code project right so the entire project so you don't actually write one file in java right you you big you make big application enterprise application in that case you will put all the classes in packages it can be a sub package so here telesco is a sub package of com package now since we are getting error is because initially we kept it in naveen and now we are saying the package name is changed so what you can do you can click here and you can say uh, okay how do we move we're not getting option yeah, move package to com.telesco. You can see the package name will change now. You got a new package, which is com.telesco. But it looks like one name, but actually it has, it is two different folders. Com is a different folder. Telesco is a different folder. Let me prove my point. What I will do is I will just create another file here. Or let me do one thing. Let me go to hello one. And this is a code which we have done way back. What I will do here is I will go on top and I will say package. This belongs to a package called com. Not com.telesco, but com. Again, I'm not keeping it unique, but just to ex explain you what is subfolder means is, you can see we have a com folder here. And if I go on this, I will say move the package to com. So now hello one belongs to com folder. So if I expand com, you can see we have hello one. So hello one belongs to com. But if you look at the folder, so inside com, we have telesco. Inside telesco, we have project. Is it making sense? Okay, Glam says, what if we don't have domain name? See, initially you don't need that. If you don't have a domain name, that's okay. But again, when you are making a big application, you will do something with the project, right? You will. I'm not talking about the learning code or normal project. I'm talking about the project which you actually make it live. Now, when you're making your project live, of course, you will book a domain name first. 
And whenever you work for a company, every pro every company has a domain. So even if it is a small project, you can actually put that example. Let's say we are building a big we are building a project which is a part of the Lisco. So of course your project will have some name, right? So let's say this project which are, which we are doing is Live Java. Okay, so this is a project which belongs to the Lisco company. So this big company will have their own domain. Is it making sense? Okay, so this says java.util.star means Java folder have two subfolder. That's right. So inside Java folder, we have util folder. Inside util, you'll be having those classes or interface which you want to access. Awesome. Okay, uh, Muhammad, this is not full stack Java. So basically when I say Java full stack, it means from base, we are going to the end of Java, the entire stack of Java. Awesome. Cool. Uh, now this makes sense, right everyone? Now what I will do is, I will create one more folder here. So inside Telesco, let me create a, f inside, inside, yeah, inside com, inside Telesco. Um, let me create. Let me just move this entity to com. So let's say we have com.entities just for the example. We have com.entities. So if you go back to alien now, you can see the name is changed, which is com.entities. We got alien here. And inside entity, let me create one more class here, which is A. Name A. Okay. And inside this class A, I have a static method. Okay. So why static is because I don't want to get object of it just to make it simple so i'll say public static void show i will say in a show awesome so basically we got this a right and now what i want to do is i want to call this a from project Okay. So basically, if I want to create object of A, or if I want to use A, let me just create, okay, let, let's create the object. Let's not say static. Let's create the object. Okay, why there's a problem here? Okay. So if I say A, obj equal to new A, can I access this class? And you can see we got an error. Now, why there's an error? Before this, we were able to create the object, right? Even if you get a class and then in a separate file, you can see A is a separate file now but still we are getting errors. What do you think? Why we got error there? See, the problem is when you, when you use a class, you're, you have a tendency, Java has a tendency, it will search for the same package. So it will see, hey, do we have class A inside the Telesco package? It's not there. So what you have to do is you have to actually import this package. Now, how do we import? It's very simple. You come back here and you say, hey, I want to use A. A belongs to com.entities.a. That's right. Now, since it's a separate package, you have to mention import com.entities.a. But still, it is not working. We got the error there. Now, why is the error? It's very simple again. Whenever we talk about the package, whenever we talk about the same package, they can access it very easily. The moment you are importing from another package, you have to make sure that your classes, 
are public. Now, only public classes are available outside the packages. Let me repeat, only public classes are uh, public things are allowed outside the package. Now, since it, it was not public, that's why we was getting error. And now you can see error gone. Now, basically the public private, those are called access modifiers. So these things are called access modifiers. Okay, Ayush is asking what is class path? So basically a path where you have your class. So if you want to specify, hey, that's a class I want to use and it's not able to find that, you have to specify the class path. Yeah, we'll talk about static import later. As of now, we are focusing on the basics of packages. Okay, do we have access specifiers in Java? We don't have it. We have access modifiers. Okay. Now, do we only have public? No, we also have private. Now, private things can be used only inside a class. Of course, you can't make a class private. That doesn't make sense. You can see if you, even if you try to say a class as private, it says the modifier private not allowed here. So basically you can't make the class private. So you have to make a class public or if you don't mention anything by default, it will be default. So if you don't mention, you have a default modifier. Now default classes are accessible inside the same package. Someone that uh, Amit also mentioned that here. So if you say, if you don't mention anything, it is accessible only in the same package. If you want it to be used outside the package, just make it public. Okay. I hope this things make sense. And we got, yeah. So remember this, whenever you want to use outside the package, always make it public. But what if you have a class here, you're getting a class, one more class, and the class is B. And I want to extend the class A here. Now, of course you can do that because you are directly getting it. But then we have one more, which is called protected. Oh, sorry, not here. Uh, let's say this is predicted. You can make your methods predicted. Now, if you make your method as predicted, uh, can I call the method? So, if, if can I say obj dot show? Let me do it once again. What I will do is I will make it public. Now, if I make it public, the method method is public here. And you can see there's no error, you can call it. But if you make this, if you don't mention anything, it is default by default, right? And again, default cannot be accessed outside the class. And even if you say predicted, even this is not accessible outside the package. But during inheritance, we can do that. Example, if I say there's a method which is public void ABC, And from this inside ABC, we can call show. See, we can't call show from here, but you can call show from the ABC method. Why is because there's an inheritance. So protected methods can be, or protected members can be accessed outside the package only in terms of inheritance. That's right, Darshan. If you can make it final, then no one can override it. But still, if you want to uh, specify that it can be accessed outside the package, but in the inheritance, we can use predicted. Can we extend packages? No, we can't do that.
So if you know this will be accessed outside the package, just make it public and done. Awesome. Okay, what's the difference between final method and predicted method? So final is basically to, to stop the method from going into overriding. So when you make a uh, method final, no one can override it. Protected is to specify where we can call it. So protected members can be called from the same package or outside. In fact, not from the same package from the same, uh, from the class which is inheriting it. No, we can't create protected class. Protected can be used for the variables and for the methods. Okay. And as I mentioned before, we'll talk more about interfaces uh, in the next session. Uh, because that's where we are going to in introduce how do we use interfaces in Java 8 and after that because interfaces has changed a lot after Java 8. For Android, Java is enough? Yes. So first learn Core Java and then go for Kotlin. That's right. So don't just watch the videos, Suresh. Practice. That's where you will make it perfect. How to practice this? Install the setup and then start practicing. Uh, thank you so much for the super chat, Pratyush. Okay, Java 8 or Java 1.8 are same. No, Java 8, actually till 1. Point, till Java 8 version, they were naming it as 1.8. But after that, they named it as Java 9. So they were... So Java, Java messed up with the version numbers. At least they are not messing up with the languages. Okay. So yeah, that's about interfaces and packages. Uh, and remaining thing we'll be seeing. In fact, there are some questions on the uh, batch as well, as I mentioned before. Uh, the ba yes, the batch is starting from 9th to July, which will, be the, which will be live classes. Okay, this is not recording. Uh, the session which starts from the 9th July will be live class, will be happening on Zoom. Uh, and uh, apart from that, uh, there's another upcoming events are coming up, which will update in some time. Yeah, Java 18, Java 18 has also arrived. That's right. That's right. The, the training will be certified. You will get certificate for the training. Okay, uh, there's one more thing. Uh, we are coming up with some amazing hackathons for blockchain. And uh, for that, uh, again, updates will be coming soon. Maybe by tomorrow morning, we'll publish the video. Okay, or maybe today itself. Is it done? Okay, so in the evening, you'll, you'll receive a video for, for upcoming update on Java hackathons, not ha Java hackathons, uh, blockchain hackathons and uh, the blockchain course as well. Uh, so I'm coming up with two, these two amazing courses, Java and blockchain, both. Okay, now the Java badge is starting from 9th of July. We only have three days left. To access the, to see the course content and the fees, you can use a link in the top. So use chat, use pin chat, use that, or you can also find it in description. Yeah, Java hackathon is in plan, but as of now, we want to finish the blockchain hackathon first. Okay, so this says, let us learn first, and that's the idea. How about learning and then also implementing it in the hackathon? So from Monday, I'm starting with the blockchain live sessions as well. Let me in the chat window if you're excited for that. We'll do Java and uh, blockchain parallelly from next week. Okay, which one is better for beginner? I mean, it depends which field you want to choose. 
blockchain is exciting java is everywhere so you have to choose one or maybe you can learn both why not okay do we have any special course for spring and microservices not as of now but you can enroll for the course and you can wait for spring to start don't attend the java core java session even that works Okay, what happens in the hackathon? Basically, uh, you have to be there on the floor uh, for 24 hours and then we will give you a problem statement to solve. So you, you will get a question basically and then you will be given 24 hours to code and the best solution will get rewards. So most of most of the rewards are cash price. First prize is 2 lakh rupees, second prize is 1 lakh rupees, third prize is 50,000 rupees. Okay, what exactly blockchain? Uh, you can go to this channel and can you paste the link for the blockchain tutorial playlist? Oh, that's great. So this is the analytics enrolled for the Java batch. Cool. So that's it. Three more days to go before we start with the Java batch and I'm excited. I'm waiting for the weekend to get started. Any Python classes? Yeah, we there's a plan for the Python class. The only problem is there's so much of demand of different technology. I was thinking I will only focus on, on blockchain and then I, I got a huge demand that they want a Java course. So I launched Java course because they wanted to learn it live. Uh, now there's a demand for Python as well. So let me know in the chat. You're also excited for the Python, Python uh, full stack batch. Okay, Mono Gaming says any extra offer for the course, sir? Extra offer? No, we don't have an offer as of now. Let me do one thing. Now, since you are watching this, let me give you a discount. Hold on. As I mentioned before, when I'm happy, I do give away a lot of discounts. I just need to find a discount coupon here. Okay, this is only for the viewers who is watching this now. So I'm pasting a link for the discount for Java course. Okay, this is only for Java. This is 25% off. Only applicable for people watching this in a live session. Make sure you disable chat later. <laughs> okay, this is only for the... Uh... So see in the chat, there's a link. Uh, now, when, once you complete the payment, you have to send your... Uh, we have to send a screenshot at connect at the rate .com. Okay, Ravish says already enrolled laws for me. Okay, so once you complete the payment, send me the screenshot, we'll enroll you in the course. Okay, you want for blockchain as well on the same day. Let me see, do you have the coupons for blockchain available? I think I have it. Let me just verify if it is still working. Okay, looks like we have, looks like we have. Okay, that's a big loss for me, but let's do it for this live session at least. Okay, patient, another link. This is for blockchain. Again, 25% off. And that's it. This is available only for next 10 minutes. <laughs> we will close the live chat. Do we have an option of disabling the live chat? Do we have an option of removing the live chat after the session? All right, okay. So I've shared two links and uh, yeah. So that's it from this session. See you tomorrow. Tomorrow again, we have a session and, uh, but make sure when, once you complete the payment, send the screenshot, that is very important. Uh, where you will send the screenshot, you have to send, you have to send the screenshot at the Lisco. Okay. Let me just write it here. Connect 
at the rate telisco.com and this is applicable only for next 15 minutes will I will expire the link after this 15 20 minutes okay that's it everyone see you in the next live session bye bye take care see you in the next live session bye bye